Good morning. I first want to acknowledge and recognize that we are on the traditional territories of the Apatipi and Nisenepec peoples for our Fox Complex sites, and they are our valued partners. I would also like to thank the municipalities of Timmins and Matheson for all their support over the years. Also, a big shout out to Mr. Rob McEwen for always being a huge proponent of exploration and innovation over the years. And finally, I would like to thank all the other team members at McEwen Mining for all their dedication and hard work to keep advancing this project. So just a little, uh, I'll just be mainly speaking to the geology today. So just a little bit of background for the stock, uh, stock complex. So the stock complex is located approximately 40 kilometers <coughs> from our current producing Froome mine at the Black Fox complex, which is located right here. Um, we're ideally situated along an eight kilometer stretch of the Dester Porcupine um, in proximity to the Nighthawk Lake Fault, which is now thought to splay off east of our stock mill. It is also noteworthy to mention that the Nighthawk Lake Fault Zone is the direct host for one of our satellite deposits known as Stock East, which is located approximately here. And it's uh, generally characterized by strongly pyrotized bleach made through volcanics, which have been strongly faulted and brecciated. Some other noteworthy deposits along the Nighthawk Lake Fault include Aquarius, which is owned by Agnico Eagle, the Pominex Zone, and the historical Nighthawk Mine, which are all to the west of Stock West. Just a little bit, his, little bit of history of the Stock Mine. So gold mineralization was discovered in the area by Hollinger Consolidated Gold Mines in 1961. And Stock West was discovered by McEwen Mining in 2019 with a discovery hole S1998 grading approximately 5.6 grams per ton over 30 meters core length and is located about 800 meters west of the former producing stock mine. Next I'll give you a little bit of history of the historical stock mine itself. So there's three shoots of the stock, three main shoots of the stock mine. The, fur the furthest one to the east is what we call the N2 shoot, which is generally hosted by ultramafic rocks, while the hanging wall central and west zones, and the west zone is not to be confused with stock west, are generally hosted by bleach mafic volcanics. Not much, and they're uh, generally northeast striking and dipping steeply to the south. Not much is known about the M1, M2 zones at the mine, which are located in the upper portions, only to say that they're north dipping, which might be due to a rollover in highly deformed bleached mafic volcanics, uh, hosted shear vein systems. And it's also noteworthy to mention that if a decision is made to go back underground at the stock mine, there's a high potential for a possible remnant mining, as the gold prices were generally low over the years during the, when the mine was previously active and little exploration took place. And then just a little bit of uh, history on where we've been doing our drilling at stock mine. So what you're looking at is a plan view of the stock property, zoomed in from that previous slide. So right here is the stock mine and mill located approximately here. Most of the drilling was concentrated from 2018 to 2020 at stock west, located about 800 meters away, drilling right off uh, Triton Road. And then a decision was made in um, Decision was made in uh, 2020 to start drilling more at Stock, Man Stock Main, which is the green points right here, and to continue drilling at Stock East in order to augment mineralization at Stock West and to identify mineralization proximal to the historical Stock Mine. This is a typical cross section through Stock West, so this is through the heart of the heart of the ore body. So Stock West is generally northeast, southwest, and dips striking and dips at about 70 degrees to the south, slightly deformed, but generally has its planar features. It's also noteworthy to mention that the overburden is quite thick in this area, it's generally about 50 meters, but sometimes in excess of 120. So just a typical sequence to take you through, and these are the night this is the Nighthawk Lake Fault in the Hanging Wall and the Dester Porcupine Fault in the Foot Wall. So in the Hanging Wall, we have a mix of pillow mafic volcanics intercalated with cyanide porphyry dikes, and there's also a large porphyry body located right at the contact between um, the Nighthawk Lake Fault and multiple ultramafic volcanic flows, which we locally call TUV or soapstone. Um, the Stock West main ore body seen here in red, um, is, which will be seen in the following slide, is also hosted, is hosted in by coarse grain green carbonate ultramafics that appear to uh, possess some characteristics of an ultramafic intrusion but more detailed structurally studies that we've done could conversely be argued that the intrusive texture 
maybe due to some metasomatic processes resulting from multiple deformation events. And then the final part is in the foot wall of Stock West. It's characterized by the presence of additional ultramafic volcanic flows, a wedge of Tamiskaming Age sediments, and then finally porcupine sediments in the foot wall of the Dester porcupine zone. A little bit of history on the Stock West core morphology. So the main Stock West deposit is hosted by emerald green, fuchsite altered ultramafics with abundant, sometimes visible gold bearing, multiple generational extensional deformational veins, which are mainly made up of dolomite, magnesite, and minor amounts of quartz. Geological interpretation suggests that some of these veins are oriented to the north-northeast, making them slightly oblique to the overall northeast-southwest trend of the Stock West deposit. And I'll be showing you later that you can actually see within the internal stock west, uh, a plunge line which represents these north-northeast trending uh, extensional veins. The true thickness of the stock deposit is somewhat variable, but for the most part it's about 20 to 30 meters thick and appears to be amenable to bulk style mining because of a good continuity in grade and width. So this is a uh, zoomed in uh, stock west mine longitudinal all the way from stock west, which is highlighted here in uh, pink, this is our PEA, which identified about 255,000 ounces in inferred and indicated material. Um, and then the background colors are the true width GXMs, that's grade times true width. So the hotter the color, the better the <coughs> true width GXM. And then also noteworthy to point out is mineralized, high potential mineralized zones that we've identified through our drilling at Stock Main over the past couple of years which could potentially represent early mining horizons as we eventually drive a ramp from surface all the way down to Stock West. What you're seeing here in blue is a preliminary ramp design out to Stock West. And then I also want to highlight this underexplored area, which is generally mineralization in the hanging wall to Stock West, and it could potentially um, provide early, more early mining horizons as we eventually drive the uh, ramp to Stock West. So much of the drilling beginning in late 2022 and continuing in 23, was concentrated in the southwest portion of the stock west deposit down here. Um, the early results indicate the main mineralized body does indeed continue in this particular plunge vector. Limited drilling, um, both in the hanging wall uh, at stock west and the historical stock mine have now identified an area, as I was mentioning before, what, we, what we're now calling the underexplored area up here. Um, Geological interpretation suggests this hanging wall mineralization, which is hosted by bleached mafic volcanics as opposed to ultra mafics, which is hosted at Stock West, could be highly prospective and potentially add additional mining horizons for the Stock West project. And then this is just zoomed out a little bit. So this is the Stock West grade times true thickness map. So we have the historical mine located right here to the east, and then just showing the two plunge vectors we've identified through our drilling and geological interpretations. The first one being the, what we call the 30 degree mine plunge vector, originating at the top of the mine and moving all the way down to Stock West. And then the N2 plunge vector, that is the, that is the uh, chute right here on the east side of the mine, just continuing at, continuing at depth. So these are highly prospective areas and could add additional resources for both the medium and long term development of Stock West. So bearing that in mind, we're now going to zoom into this area right here, and this is what we call the sh shallow ramp portal zone. So we released some results in late 2022. So recent released drill results from the shallow stock west ramp portal zone indicate good grading and accessible mineralization approximately the proposed uh, ramp entrance to stock west. Um, a little bit of history. So current geological interpretation suggests that there are two distinct flat-lying mineralized lenses within an overall steeper dipping shear zone. So you have one lens up here and one lens down here, and we're doing a lot of infill drilling right now just to verify grade and uh, geometry. So there's, there's also great potential for resource growth around the stock mine due to limited drilling over the, over the years. So this is one area we we're actually targeting something else, and we bumped into this guy on, along the way. So. And then just uh, a little bit of what the core looks like. So this is a composite core photo from one of our higher grade holes. The ultramafic rocks seen here are a combination of green carbonate, so any of the green color right here, and which are fuchsite altered and gray carbonate, which are yellow sericite altered. And I'd also draw your attention to the abundance of the high angle extensional, extensional white to gray veins. So this particular intersection is also made up of multiple composites grading better than four grams per ton as well. So it's not just this 1,000 gram intersection that's carrying the overall grade of the intersection. So it 
graded about, we cut it to 30 grams, it graded about six and a half grams over about 14 meters core length. And then just to zoom in on the 1,000 gram assay, so this sample particularly was interesting because it had an abundant pyrite and matrix-related visible gold in addition to this huge nugget you're seeing right here, which helps explain the greater than 1,000 gram assay result. At McEwen, we always love using innovative technology, so we're currently working with a group called GTP Marchand, based out of Montreal, in order to help de-risk and optimize all aspects of the Stockwest deposit. So this image, GTP, which stands for Grain Treatment Process, is very, it is very important to fully understand the morphology and nature of the gold grain distribution in order to properly domain the ore body in terms of resource modeling, because it appears the zone could be quite heterogeneous, and investigate how much of the gold is ultra-fine or ultra-coarse or anything in between. And this, of course, is the nugget effect. So, and of course, these processes and investigations will also have a direct impact on milling and future recoveries. So again, staying with the innovative technology, this is one of my favorite toys. It's called LIBS, stands for Laser Induced Breakdown Spectroscopy. So on the far left, you see a high resolution core photo. And then through, the, through geological interpretations and AI, they're able to construct a mineral map to basically say where all the minerals are in the core. They do a mineral stack, which is just the relative abundances. And then they can pinpoint where the gold concentrations are. So for this particular sample from Stock West, you can see the high pyrite concentrations correlate pretty well with the high spikes in gold concentration. So, again, so to fully understand how the gold is distributed in the system allows for better milling and recovery techniques, in addition to enhanced drill core logging and drill, ve drill target vectoring by producing a, a much more robust geological and resource based model. So, oh, so finally, in conclusion, at the end of Q1, we cored about 30,000 meters of drilling between Stock West, Stock Main, and Stock East, putting us ahead of schedule for our planned 80 million, sorry, 80,000 planned uh, drilling campaign for the Stock Project this year. Currently, we're doing an internal economic study as a follow-up to our 2022 PEA. And then finally, getting back to the innovative technology, we're proceeding with a phase two mineralogical study with the GTP Marchand Group in order to in, in order to optimize and de-risk the Stockwest project, which we hope to start sometime at the end of this year. So, thank you.